Can you talk to him? Okay. Um, just give me one moment. I can put it in the camera. Right Y'all been busy? Yep. Have you? I imagine when the coronavirus first hit, you like everybody else, you wasn't busy at all, but... Honestly, you really never spoke that much. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we did a little bit, but... I mean, people were stopping, driving, running into each other, and that's driving got, into other things. And that's even got more fun. Yeah, so, I mean, and now car Shop right here close somewhere? Same old six and seven. Well, has been doing no body work here lately. Have you not? Uh uh. You got out of it or what have you done? Got plumb out of it. What the hell? Well, they ruined my reputation, Jason. Um, From body work? How the hell are you running your body, your body work reputation? Because of all that stuff I got into out there in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And now you got into anything? You didn't know that I had gotten into. Uh, basically exposing the truth about the Oklahoma bombing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought me and you talked about that. Mm -hmm. Really? Well, anyways, they basically uh, blackballed me to the point that if I was to get a good, decent job at a good, decent place, uh, the insurance companies was going to have a flare-up about me working for that particular body shop. Really? Yeah. Huh. Now, you had a body shop at one time in Mayfield, right? Murray. Mm -hmm. Was it Murray or Mayfield? Murray. Murray. I closed it in 2012 13. 2012 or 13. Mm -hmm. You also had one at Hoptown, didn't you? No, I never had one at Hop Hoptown. Did you know Pritchett? Mm -hmm. You knew Mr. Pritchett? Malcolm yeah. Pritchett? I didn't know, I know of him, I talked to him on the phone before. I never actually met him. I just talked to him on the phone a time or two. I thought that one time you had three body shops. Mm -hmm. no, you only just, had two. I just had two and then I had all the ones across the road that we did all that dipping Dots crap out of. And Is that just, whenever you was dropping the frames and stuff? Yeah, we were doing a whole bunch of stupid stuff back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you still doing that? No, no we did 100% insurance and that's about it. We don't do much else. Just it's gotten pretty tough to work on these automobiles, hasn't it? Yeah, it's a little different. A little different. Week. What y'all's body shop rates up here in Kentucky? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Yeah. Uh, now fiberglass is where it's at. Eighty-nine dollars. Eighty-nine dollars. Yeah. We like seeing those, and if it's a camper or something, we charge for three spots. If it takes up that much room. On a big something big. How about aluminum? Aluminum. Do you stay away from aluminum, like a F one fifties or what? Now we got to do all that stuff now. Because you're supposed to have a separate room, separated from all your other body shop tools, to the point that you'll contaminate. 
your body shop metal tools will contaminate your aluminum tools, vice versa, your aluminum tools will contaminate your body shop tools, or supposedly that's what they claim. We actually, uh, we put a lot of bed sides on them, and everything rivets on them. You know the rivet gun for those things are... The, the Amex one, where you say it? Hey, come on in. Come on. He's already got calls coming for that dinner, so he should be here any second. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. All right, no problem. Thank you, Joe. This is interesting, or I found it to be interesting. <clears throat> it ain't just a regular rivet gun? Well, I mean, you got two different kinds of rivet guns. You got the big rivet gun that you put, like, glasses, you know, the big heavy duty rivets and then you got just the regular either steel rivets or aluminum rivets so it ain't just the same type of rivets? No, they actually... Because I don't think I've ever put a, uh, a aluminum uh, bedside on. Uh, a lot of these guys have like old Herb. Herb yeah. Uh, I don't know where the dang tools at. We have a tool that we we ordered these things and they're like... Uh, there's one right there. I mean, it's pretty easy. When these things are undone here, it's got a little flare to end on it. Okay. With a rivet gun, uh, you buy it through Auto Body Supply or one of them. It's uh, fourteen thousand dollars for this rivet gun. And you have to use these rivets. They're about seventy dollars a piece, and that's what insurance pays for. Seventy dollars a piece. Yeah. And these here. Are ten bucks, <laughs> and these here pulls the rivets out and they put the rivets back in. Really? Yeah. And to be honest with you, I didn't know that. We had a body guy that come in here that just kind of uh, he jumped from body shop to body shop, and picked these up along the way, and he said, "Hey, you guys need to order some of these because this is the fourteen thousand dollar rivet gun." We said, "Really? Yeah." So we started buying them. They work. I mean, they do exactly what. I'll be darned. Yeah, but these other guys have got the big guns and big fancy. And that thing right there does the exact same thing. Yep. Is it a little slower? Is that the reason why that? No, not really. It's uh, just, they just they made it for that, you know. It's more manual though, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just manual. Uh, to where if you buy the fourteen thousand dollar deal, it's probably more hydraulics. Yeah, it's pneumatic. You can get it in some different places, I guess you'd say. Right. But. Like on all the Ford and body side stuff. <coughs> right. You don't have to get out in the center or nothing. It's all on the edges anyway. Really? Um, you had a couple body men that I kind of was intrigued by. One guy, he was kind of tall and lanky. Is he still working for you? He had some weird uh, ideals. <laughs> That's Terry. Terry, yeah. <coughs> long-haired Terry Key. Yeah, long-haired Terry. No, he actually, his... Uh, his dad ended up passing away, and they had a bunch of rebuilds at the time. So he went back home there in Illinois, and he started finishing up the rebuilds, and he got them finished up. And now he has went to work for a body shop up there by his house that he kind of picks his own hours and go in however many days he wants. So he kind of semi-retired, and uh, he still comes by and sees us once in a while. Does he? Yeah. Okay, how about the guy that was either retired or, or fixing to retire their old, older gentleman that was helping you. And I think he was more or less part-time at the time whenever I was up here helping you. Who would that be? He was a little older than me. I'm 59. So he'd probably be about 69. I bet that was Herbie Burr. Herbie. Is it Herbie? That sounds like it. Well, his little brother is 60. Two, and I got him working for me. He okay. He's been with me a while. And well, what happened to Herbie? Herbie's still living? Yeah, Herbie is... Uh, I'm sure he's fully retired now. Well, no. He left here. He came back for about three years. He went over to Jackson Interstate for about a year. And now he's in Eddieville, Kentucky at a body shop. Herbie is? Yeah. Wow, because he basically only only wanted to get involved in doing body work during the winter because the summertime he loved to fish. Still does. <laughs> really? He said that's the only time that he ever really wanted to work was in the winter.
Because summertime, he was always out there on the water fishing and stuff. That's right. But he was uh, very uh, energetic when it come to different ideals and working on vehicles and stuff. He, uh, like I said, he's, he's still working. Uh, he's still fishing all during the summertime. Does he really? Yeah. Uh, I got his niece and his nephew. Nephew cleans up cars. His niece... Uh, is a preference. She just preps everything. Okay, so you got the family here. Yes, so. Well, I'll be uh, darned. Got Paul here. He's body guy, and uh, Chunk is a painter, and William. Is he's he part artist. of the? Is he kin to the no. Herbie bunch too? No, they're no kin. To yeah, them. I probably don't know none of those guys. Now, uh, now, uh, uh, Chunk, he was he he worked here on and off. Do you remember Aaron, the young guy that worked over there? I do. Him? He come in the other day. He's down at Randy's body shop now. He come, come in and visited the other day. Randy, the guy I used to work for? Did you work for Randy's? Down on Kentucky Avenue? I worked for somebody pretty close to here. That was real. You, you worked for Pro Collision, I bet you. I did. I worked for Pro Collision. Greg. 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 Real odd. Something. Real odd. I mean, he was difficult to work for. <laughs> yeah. He still did. Is he still working down there? He's, Greg? He's still, they don't come in as much. They got somebody that runs it. They're kind of absent body uh, owners, I guess. Uh, okay. But they're, they're still still rolling on. They still got plenty of work. They still do quite a bit. Where is that shop? It's one block over. Go down here to Linwood's, hang a left, and it's right there on the right. And behind the dealership? Yep. I thought that's where it was. Yep. That. Yeah, he was an oddball, man. He, Me and him wound up crisscrossing just over a day gum uh, moisture barrier. I didn't put the moisture barrier on just right whenever you, you know, uh, have to take off the door and put on door skin. You know, you got to take out everything loose. And whenever I was getting ready to put the, the door panel on there, I had the uh, moisture barrier that wasn't sitting in there just right. It was cocked a little bit to where part of the hole was, was still exposed. He jumped all over me about that Marsha Bear, son, like I had kick cocked a whole freaking wreck or something, like that I had done something astronomically wrong to an automobile. And I'm thinking to myself, Greg, Greg, it's just a freaking moisture barrier. He said it. Ain't, he said it ain't just a moisture barrier. He said it's what prevents from um, mildew. And he went into all this spill about about moisture and mildew and he's, he's still got he must be his, just a kook he is but he's got most of his original guys still down there i don't know why i've tried to hire a couple of before and uh, he just got his he just got his ways doesn't he and it's like uh, he, no, his guys will not leave i've tried i've all tried to offer him over payment to get him down here you know and really won't happen and he's always asked as far as i'm concerned yeah. he, I used to work for him at Bell's Auto World. He was the supervisor. Was he? I hated him. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I get because he does have some quirky ways. Oh, yeah. Bunch of them. But he's also got some good, good, uh, uh. Oh, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> We've got into it a few times. And, but, you know, he, he does, they still do great work. And uh, they still got plenty of Is he one of your competitors towards cutting your throat whenever it comes to the business being really really bad he's a lot he, he's got a lot of he hadn't stole a lot of work from you no he's direct repair so he uh that kind of insurance feeds him work too you know a lot of different oh yeah stuff. oh yeah but uh you know we stay uh we stay pretty well steady but herbie's in eddiesville kentucky now yeah. Yeah, how far is eddiesville from here yeah i would say yeah. is it uh, is it it's more closer towards hoptown isn't it Area. Do you remember what year it was that I was over here? No idea. It was long about 207. Remember I had a lot of static going on up there in Land Between the Lakes at the time that I was helping you? I remember you had some stuff going on, but I don't remember what Some I issues going on with Land Between the Lakes and been up there fasting and, and praying and, and yeah, they... That was, that was 14 or 15 years They ago. tried to railroad me. They tried to railroad me up there. Well, then people tried to ruin me. As a matter of fact, the reason why I got this belly on me, see, I didn't have this belly on me before. That's the reason why you didn't recognize me. I mean, I've always been a little chunky, but ne never nothing like this. 
They poisoned me. You uh, you had a Toyota when you was here before. Still got it. Got all your tools, had all your tools loaded up in the back of it. Yep. Uh, who was it? Your, was it your son called? You Probably. You called me one time about a year after Yeah. all that, and then I think your son ended up calling, and that's the last I heard from him. Yeah. Oh, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago, Jason. 14 years ago. How long have you been in business down about it? Because you just started basically whenever I come to work for you we, we've been in here, 207. We've been here 20 years. Yeah. And then we were in on south side of town for a bit. We were in Illinois for just a bit. So. You're originally from Illinois, though, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, well, have you made this your home now, or do you still live in Illinois? No, I live in Grace County now. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, we live in Out towards Mayfield. Yep, we've been there about 14 years. You remember the big ice storm? Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you? Yep. Yeah, that, that was that was 10 years ago. I was in uh, uh, t 10 years ago prior to last year. It was in 2009 whenever the ice storm hit. Mm -hmm. See, I'd done already left and I'd done already was working for some people out in Hoptown. Uh, Mr. Pritchett and I'd already worked for Sins's up in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I bumped into some people that's you know in the same industry as far as adjusters and stuff like that that knew you and and spoke well of you and you've done really well for yourself in the past. Uh, I guess since that ice storm hit, basically ten years, you you really kicked up and yeah. stepped up to the plate, hadn't you? I guess we've been busy. I mean, you had to shut down that one store there in Murray. Well, that was old seven, old eight. Uh, that was right before the ice storm. Yeah, uh, I guess Dippin' Dots ended up. Uh, they got about fifty, sixty thousand dollars in with us, and they filed bankruptcy. And yeah, I found out about it on the news. I was watching the news one night and it said, "What? Yeah, Dippin' Dots filed bankruptcy." What? What was? What was they in? In that deep? with you about? We painted all them kiosks for them, those ice cream stands where you see them all over these parks nationwide. Okay. They'd bring them here, we'd repair them over here in these buildings, fix them, paint them, right. ship them out. Right. Well, they kept getting farther and farther and my dad told me, he said, don't let these people... Don't let them get in too, too, said, too much. Dippin' Dots ain't going nowhere. I was watching the news one night, they filed bankruptcy. I thought, oh, shit. And they, and they, and they filed bankruptcy on y'all too as well, didn't they? Yeah, and we, uh, I Good. went over there that morning. I wasn't leaving. I was leaving with something. I think I ended up leaving with $12,000. That's all that made me. The, the, uh, was like, that like a grievance payoff or something? Well, no, I was pissed. I wasn't leaving. I made a scene over there. Did you? Yeah, I needed my money. Yeah. Right. I paid on. They fixed and put the hurt on you. Yeah. So I ended up. So I'm. I'm telling you now. I will be here from here on out. I ain't leaving as soon as I get a check. He went upstairs. He made a bunch of phone calls and stuff. This poor guy felt sorry for him. He's just an accountant over there. You know? Right. He came down with a check for twelve thousand dollars. He said, "Man, this. I'm telling you, I cannot get you any more back. This is it. This is all I get." And I said, "That'll work." So I left, and then I got some papers from the judge. 30 days later, so they elected me zero dollars. I think they still owed us 40000 or something around there. Yeah. And uh, so, and then GM and all that was all falling back up. So we ended up having to close Murray. We ended up, I'd actually bought the. That was after the 2008 there. bubble burst, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Whenever the big bailout happened with, with uh, Bush. That borrowed seven hundred and seventy-five billion dollars, a little less than a trillion dollars, to bail out General Motors, Ford, um, mm -hmm. two or three other big car manufacturers. That's whenever gasoline went to three and four dollars a gallon. Yeah. Some places it was almost five dollars a gallon. May have been five dollars a gallon in Illinois. We were towing during all that, you know. And, uh, gasoline was high, wasn't it? I had bought those buildings, and I'd already paid a lot of money down there. Well, after all that took place. I either had to let that guy have them building back or I'd end up losing them. So I ended up letting them have them back. We moved everything under one roof. Then the ice storm hit and that saved us right there. Yeah, the ice storm saved you. Yeah, that's what that's what it amounted to. So 
Well, if you'd have had that other building door up there in Murray, you'd have made that much more during that ice storm too. Yeah, but if I'd have tried to keep that two years, I'd have lost it. You'd probably drove it crazy. Yeah, I've never been able to, I've never been able to pay for all that. Recuperate. Never been able to recuperate. Oh seven, oh eight. That was a bad one. Bankruptcy. Oh, it's, yeah, it's serious. <laughs> in other words, it almost drug you into bankruptcy court. Yep. Really? Yeah. And it which, will if which, you if you get in too deep with them. You know the thing is back then, I had junk trucks, I had junk tools, I didn't owe anybody nothing, I didn't have no payments. And if it wasn't for that, I'd been all right. You know, or I, I, that's the only reason I I come out of. It. Yeah. Now if I was like I am now, and I got new tow trucks and I got loans and all right. that crap. Right. Right. <laughs> Fold it up and go to the house. You'd have to fold it up and go to the house. We got into it one time. A big tornado hit down there in Jackson, Tennessee. I worked for a collision specialist for about 10 years. And during the hustle bustle of, of everything, um, you know, whenever you got a shop that ordinarily does, let's say, $750,000 in a year, and all of a sudden you jack that up, to one point seven million dollars in a year, mm -hmm. you got a lot of stuff going on that you didn't ordinarily have going on, and of course you got your PDR guys up there doing PDR work, which makes you know makes the shop good money if you got good PDR guys, and uh, we wound up getting in cahoots with I think it was Farm Bureau or State Farm or one of them over a hundred thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, over uh, refundables. Sorry to interrupt just for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, it's Hooman on his Lexus. Uh -huh. He's just wanting an update. Go ahead, get Tell him a truck is down in Nashville picking up parts for them today. Yep. Uh -huh. When they get back with that truck and I find out what's on it, I will give him a holler back okay. by the end of the morning. Okay. Before he gets back. Okay. But, uh, uh, whenever you have that many uh, bills that's out, it can stack up real, real quick towards, and, and we basically, or the boss man basically had to threaten, hey, if you guys don't come clean on this bill, we're going to have to deviate from throwing you any more work. Yeah. And they finally cut him a check, you know? It, uh, it adds up quick. Well, you know, uh, Just like you doing the work over there. I mean, a paint job here and there, $2,000. $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. I mean, you continue to spread that out over a period of a couple of years, and they owe you that kind of money, and it can catch up with you real quick. You know, last year here, I didn't think we'd ever do that whatsoever. We were always about a $500,000 to $600,000 shop. And last year, I think we did $1.3 million. Good for you. Problem with that being, a lot of those companies we did that work for are 90 and 120 day companies. So like Coca-Cola and this? Sure, you gotta wait. I mean- You it, gotta hold up on your money. It looks great. Yeah. But whenever you're sitting there and you got jobs rolling in and you got these jobs that ain't been paid for and you're out a ton of money on Yes, these. sir. Next thing you know, you run up a big credit yeah. on your on your uh, expenses and on your- uh, We're due 30 days, you know, we're, we charge for like- You do a rollover every yeah. 30 days. And we got to pay our stuff off. And, uh, you know, that sounds good, but when you get to those big numbers. Those corporate guys, they can they can, they can can cheat a little bit, can't they? Yeah. Especially whenever you go to working for the, doing work for the city, or you go to working, doing work for any type of big corporate. Uh, you oh, got to kind of bend over backwards for them a little bit, don't you? Well, you know, like Coke, Coke for years, they paid us a debit card. We charge 5% using the debit card. They pay the 5%. Don't care. Okay, well, they get it. Park just rolling in here, get it going. And then the guy comes in and goes, Well, they're doing away with credit cards. Somebody will call you on accounts to get it set up. Well, the next job, the next job. And before long, somebody calls me and says, Hey, we went to 120 days. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, and you got all these parts stacked up. Yes. And then you got. Are they now, are they now charging you for uh, recirculating fees whenever you order a part and, and you have to send it back? In other words, yeah. it was the wrong part? This after 30 days, it's just your part. It's your part, yeah. But uh, they started doing that a few years ago, didn't they, towards restocking fees? Yeah. What is it, 2%? Yeah, they have a lot of restocking. They compromise a little bit on a big part, like uh, like if you ordered a, a bedside that's like $900 bedside uh, to where it would cost you $90 to send that back, mm -hmm. depending upon whose fault it is, 
and how many times that that happens, oh, yeah. they can bill you for that. Stocking fees. Because a truck has to come out here and pick that dude up and take it back to, to wherever it come from and put it back on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? You know, now we, uh, if we're going to go somewhere to get a part, we charge them for it. If we got a car that's going to allow it, used to, what we do, we jump in a car, we drive it down and get a lot it. Now we put it on a tow truck, we charge a $125 tow bill. And, you know, you have to. Yeah. You know, and uh, everybody. Well, uh, there's liability issues there. Yeah. I mean, if you was to get in a bad wreck between point A and point B, and you was to kill somebody, even though you was driving a customer's car, it could still reflect upon this business to the point that you could lose your shirt over that. You know that? Yeah. yeah. Huh? I don't even know how you get we... sued. A you get sued a couple million dollars, and that'd be the end of you, Jason. Yeah. We uh, we don't even know how we made it this far. To be honest with you. Has the uh, coronavirus, has that had a, a big uh, impact as far as being able to get circulation on parks uh, like you all do? Yeah. Because I've heard of a lot of shops right now that's had a, just a freaking nightmare on, on stuff not being scheduled right. And, and well, you know, when Ford and stuff shut down there for a bit, um, started making those ventilators and stuff, well, a lot of their parts that they didn't have in production is still not in production. So there's, there's a lot of stuff we're actually waiting on. Uh, on national back order, or sometimes they'll just red flag it all together and say, "We we don't we we don't know when we're going to get it." Yeah, I mean we we catch a we catch a lot of that stuff still. We had to knock a brand new uh, a brand new uh, Honda in the head. I don't forgot now what kind of one of those little souped up Hondas, uh, just over a uh, four thousand seven hundred dollar wiring harness. Got hit real hard, cut the wiring harness real bad to the point the customer wasn't going to be satisfied in a repair. He wanted the whole wiring harness replaced. Well, guess what? They didn't have no wiring harnesses. Matter of fact, there wasn't even a national back order on a wiring harness. They wound up totaling a freaking almost a $30,000 vehicle. I'm talking about a vehicle less than 2,000 miles on it. They wound up totaling that vehicle that only had four thousand uh, for $4,700 repair. Really? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, we... Uh, of course, there was additional costs pertaining to it, you know, hitting the left radiator support and, and crashing in the fender and the headlight and stuff like that, but it wasn't, didn't come close to no $30,000. We just finished one, and uh, it went to Marion Honda, and uh, I think it ended up uh, like about 200 bucks there on something. We did not finish this job that had a live one in it, and they told us that. We haven't seen an adjuster in Three months. They've not even seen the gestures out anymore. Why not? Because of the of the Do pandemic. On FaceTime on phone. Really? Pictures. Yeah, we don't even have anybody in here as far as customers. That's about it. We don't have no. Are idea. your methods changing in 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 that regard? Do you like that better? Well, I think a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. You know, as far as in the insurance field. Uh -huh. After they found out this is going to work. Uh huh. They're not going to send as many people out. They're not going to buy company cars no more and furnish all this. Uh huh. There's going to be a lot of adjustments towards a lot of people that has been running operations that's been paying eighteen to twenty two, twenty five hundred dollars for a building that now they realize they can do the exact same thing at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In network, what they call it, networking or something like that. And uh, of course, they set up those camcorders to where you can actually do one-on-one -on -one or you can set up four or five people talking to the same time and they'll, they'll FaceTime, uh, FaceTime us now on our phone and uh, they will like that car there that's leaving. We, we actually walked around this thing, walked around the roof. Uh, okay, show me in behind the course support. Course support. <laughs> right. He documents, records everything. Right. Processment. No adjuster. They haven't got emailed over. They didn't have to use no paper. <laughs> you know? Saving the trees. Yeah. So there you go. Now what I found out west, because I've been out west quite a bit working, working for a uh, pretty strong body shop out there. I think it was on a Honda Odyssey. Pretty sure it was a van that got hit in the right pillar. And the right pillar needed to be replaced because it concaved all that in. Not just your inner structure, but your outer and the whole nine yards. Of course, after you pull it and get it up on the frame machine and 
resynchronize your door the way that it ought to be and you know that this is pretty well where you're going to be depending upon what kind of uh, alignment that you have regardless whether it be a Genesis or a Shark or whatever. What I had run into out west is that you know how they, they used to permit or allow for you to sleeve something? Out there they won't allow for you to sleeve it. They want you to put the whole unicide in. And to me that's to me that's crazy. But now we run into the same thing on you know how that we was panel bonding a lot of these roof skins whenever it hail, whenever it hail damage, tornado damage was so bad that you could just panel bond them on her. Well now they're saying that the manufacturer don't recommend that. That you have to spot weld it. You have to I mean, it's okay to glue it, but you got to glue it and spot weld it, which is actually defeating the purpose. I mean, if you're going to glue it and have to still spot weld it, why are you gluing it for? You know. Well, so you, you, they have res they have restricted a lot of those techniques to where, back 15, 20 years ago, we was getting by with those type of techniques to where now they they've restricted them. We you know 20 years ago we were still. Uh uh, clipping colors, you know, <laughs> that shit don't fly no more. But we've got a car back here right now that's a uh, new Impala and uh, roll up Chevrolet, went put it on lift, one arm slipped out, hit a rocker. So they brought us a unicide down here. If that was the insurance job, we'd have to put this unicide in. But we are, the body guys back here right now, splicing and putting this much of a rocker in. Sure. You know, which you, you had to buy the whole damn unicide to get the rocker. Right. But if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't even see any of that going on in the body shop. But how come out west, Honda was not going to permit for us to splice that? Closer to California. <laughs> Think so? Yep. Any, as you get out there, you know. A matter of fact, whenever I was out in Phoenix, Arizona, working for Bill Luke Chrysler Dodge, a big dealership out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, I said something to the uh, to the supply man about bringing in some Prepsol. You know how out here we use Prepsol all the time towards getting the tar and stuff off of rockers and stuff. If they catch you with a with a can of Prepsol in some of those shops out west. It's like an automatic ten thousand dollar fine and up to a year in prison. Well, you know, we, uh, we EPA get, EP, we, their EPA uh, regulations are different out there. We get estimates. California, like somebody here, they were out there and they had a wreck and they had it written. And then we've got estimates from Arizona, we've got estimates from Oklahoma, from Texas. And as they get here, an estimate in California, estimate here, say that's a $8,000 estimate in California, it's only a $5,000 estimate here because of all the labor rate changes and stuff. Yeah. Same job, same parts. Yeah. But as you get from out west to here, they're cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. I mean, well, well, you know, St. Louis is known of, of a union, uh, a union. They got a union up there in the body shop industry. St. Really? Louis does. Really? Yeah, and uh, I think their union rates was on up around seventy, seventy six or seventy eight dollars an hour. Maybe yeah, on on up around eighty dollars an hour. And well, you know, the only reason that we got four years ago, we still forty two dollars an hour, but. Uh, you know, Randy's called us and they said, hey, we we know that Larry's don't get along with you guys, but we got with Larry. Us and Larry's can go to 52, if you guys go to 52. Said, yeah, we'll go to 52, you know, no problem. Well, he calls Greg. No, can't do that. It's illegal. We don't want nothing to do with it. Okay, well, all of us get together. We go to 52 and I. Well, they had to bring him to 52 and I. So he got it for free, you know, basically. But all of us have to kind of put our neck out there to, to get it up there. See, that's what we can't do in Tennessee. And the reason why is because back about 15 years ago, they got them for price fixing down there in Memphis. And yeah. since then, the body shop owners has been leery about getting together and jacking the prices up. And and if you think about it, that's crazy because in any industry, I don't care if you're cutting hair or milking cows or whatever, you're supposed to be in control of your industry. Yeah. Are you not? Yeah, no, but not in the state of Tennessee. You know, like records, we had a big deal with uh, records. You know, this guy charged this, this guy charged that, and everybody said, hey, why don't we get it at least somewhere across the board here where it's fair? And nobody wanted to do it because they call it, you know, uh, price fixing. So where do we meet at? 
down, we brought it, brought it up to the police department because we got to go down there and sign contracts because we're all on police rotation. So we go down there and we all say, hey, let's put this right somewhere. And everybody, well, we're doing it right here at the police department. Well, might as well do it here as anywhere, you know. So we did. And, and it stuck. And everybody has stayed about the same. But you get these people like, uh, Cut cutthroat industry. It's always been a cutthroat industry, Jason. You know well, that. Yeah, but we, we charge forty five dollars. Everybody across the board charges forty five dollars for storage out here. Larry Meadows says the one buy shot speaks up. We only charge twenty five. The place department says no. If we're all gonna charge the same, everybody has to charge forty five and they say That's right. We ain't doing it. We've always charged twenty five, we'll continue to charge twenty five. Well Is that on your daily in, in behind your Yeah. So they, pin. Started, they said, if you want to charge that, it's fine. You can do it on your own. You can't be in contract. So what they did, they upped it to everybody else's, you know. So, really? Yeah. I mean, I don't see where, you know, if a guy comes in here and he's down on his luck and he got pulled over for no insurance. Well, what you do in behind the closed doors yeah. is your own personal business yeah, whenever it comes to wheeling and dealing and doing yeah. contracts with, with, no with, with, your, with your personal, but now personal this people. This insurance job comes in here. And insurance paying for it, they're getting charged forty five dollars. Yeah, pay. absolutely, yeah. right, right on. So that's what it's for, you know. But uh, you know, you got people like that, and that's the reason things don't change because people like that. Right. Well, the year that I was working for you was the year right before they shut the Kentucky Dam down and tried to announce me as me being a terrorist that I was going to blow up the Kentucky Dam. Do you remember anything about that? I remember actually Terry saying something about it, but I never heard it myself. I remember Terry saying something about it, the one that worked back here. Yeah. I don't remember what all it was about. He just said, I seen our buddy on, or heard our buddy's name on the news, and I said, who's that? He said, Dennis Jackson. What for? And he, he, he told me something about it, but I don't know exactly what it was, you know. Well, they didn't show my face. But they did expose my name, Dennis Jackson. Mm -hmm. And what it was over was me up here fasting and praying so much up here in the land between the lakes. And I didn't realize how sensitive that those people was up here in the LBL. <laughs> but I guess I must have stayed too long. I must have overstayed my welcome. You know what I'm saying? And they must have got leery about me staying up there. And they put out, uh, put out false information uh, simply because, um, what, what is that town outside of Grand Rivers, um, going back towards Paducah? Um, that is going to be Katie's? Katie's or? No, not Katie's. Uh, the old road, the old road from going from Grand Rivers, where all the trailers and stuff are. They got a, uh, a, a Cracker Barrel over there now. Oh, Calvert City. Calvert City. Yeah. Somebody from Calvert City put the word out that I had made gestures that I was going to blow up the Kentucky Dam simply because I had issued out some information that God had showed me that there was going to be electrical disturbances. And they must have thought that I was going to create electrical <laughs> disturbance by blowing up the Kentucky Dam. They actually confiscated my truck over here in Paducah Really? And yeah, and had and uh, temporarily restrained me, and then took me from Paducah to Mayfield, Kentucky, and uh, done a psychic evalu evaluation on me at Four Rivers Behavior Center, and then decided, well, he's okay, uh, he's not a threat, and then they dropped me back off in Paducah, Kentucky. But yet, no, you know where my vehicle was? It was in the pound at the state trooper's office, going back towards Mayfield. So I had to hitchhike, walk, beg, borrow, just to get back to the to the precinct up there. And then whenever I got up there, I questioned them about it. I said, y'all got my vehicle. Y'all going to let me have my automobile, right? Uh, we don't know yet, Mr. Jackson. You're just going to have to wait. So they made four or five telephone calls, which took about an hour, hour and a half. to finally, they decided, well, yeah, you can get your automobile, but it's going to cost you $180. I go, wait a minute. Y'all picked me up illegitimately, 
there wasn't no charges placed upon my life towards me even so much as a, 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 a violation, a traffic violation. The doctor did not put out any type of order on my life and you're telling me that I got to pay $180 to pay a record bill because y'all went through my truck head, uh, head from toe up there at the state trooper's office? Yes, sir. Mr. Jackson, that's what it's going to take. So I had to pay the $180, but the thing about it was, Jason, listen to me. I had a campsite, because I got out of LBL, I had a campsite right there in Aurora, and I didn't realize that Aurora was so full of drugs at that time. I was staying at a campsite, and I'll be damned, probably about 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, here I am fixing to, well, I done already put my PJs on, here I am sleeping in a tent, and all these cars pull up at my campsite. Wasn't hardly nobody at this camp, at this uh, camp park. Maybe two or three people. So they drive right up to my campsite. Two FBI agents, two deputies from from uh, Murray, Kentucky. What is that? Uh, Marshall County. Where's Murray? Callaway. Is that Callaway? Callaway. Callaway, Callaway County. Two TV. TVA agents, Tennessee Valley Authority, pertaining to the bridge, and one supervisor, and I think there was a state trooper there. That's what it was. It was two state troopers and an FBI agent and a supervisor. All in told, all in told, there was about seven or eight cars that pulled up there wanting to know if I had any intentions or wanting to blow up the Kentucky Dam. I said, no, where are y'all getting this information from? I said, y'all welcome to search anything that I have here. And they did. They went through it head to toe and couldn't even find so much as a matchstick. On this old road, you can't say that anymore. But what's happened to them up here in Kentucky? You know, and I found out later through Chip, I don't know if you know Chip or not, the guy that used to own Pickles that, uh, that had uh, two restaurants that wound up burning there in Grand Rivers that now built the, the, the Patties, the Patties 1800. I found out through him that it's a possibility that they was using me as a ploy at that time in uh, 2007 of diverting away from the Kentucky Dam towards building a bridge, a $200 million bridge. That way they could have used the Kentucky Dam as a spillway. In other words, the Kentucky Dam is no longer a main corridor. You can still drive on the Kentucky Dam. You can still go down there and fish at the Kentucky Dam. You can pull off and walk or bike on the Kentucky Dam. But as far as it being a main corridor, guess where the main corridor is now? It's over there where they built that new $200,000 bridge. They used me, Jason, as a pawn of convincing somebody up there in Lexington, Kentucky, we need some money. We need some funding. We need a different bridge because this idiot it, it, uh, was a possible terrorist and we need to get away from, from the Kentucky Dam. See, whenever that ice storm hit in 2009, I actually come up here to help you guys. I worked in Grand Rivers, Kentucky for five solid days working with the volunteer fire department, putting on clothes, going out, uh, uh, putting in generators, going from house to house, making sure that people wasn't, wasn't starving to death, wasn't freezing to death, and somebody spotted me in Grand Rivers. I don't know who it was, but whoever it was, it may have been Chip, whoever it was turned me into the authorities, and they basically told me, if you don't get out of Grand Rivers, we will have you arrested. Well, I wound up going over the bridge there in Livingston County, and I went over there where the Ohio... Uh, River is down there in some of those valleys. What is, what is, uh, what is that area over there in that area? Ledbetter, uh, Smithland, all in those areas. Anyways, I went to work for this church that afternoon. They let me stay all night at the church. Fall next day, I hooked up a generator, cut down a tree, and that afternoon, guess who I was visited by? Livingston County Police Department, mm -hmm. two deputies that run me completely out of the county over here to Paducah when everything was basically at a standstill. The governor had done already put out a state of an emergency on about 70 counties and everybody was basically at a standstill to the point of no electricity. 
you know, it was colder than snot out here. Mm -hmm. And here they are running me away from Livingston County. Is that legal to do that? No. No, you can't just run somebody out of the county. Well, you wouldn't think so, but they do it. Well, they do things. They do things around here, backwoods way, don't they? Huh? Backwoods judges, backwoods attorneys. In other words, if they don't like you, if they discriminate against you, they can make life hard on you, can't they? Yeah, that's right. That's the only reason why, Jason, you have been successful in you staying here as long as you have, is because you knew what feathers, who not to rough up, and who to and who to grease up. In other words, if you didn't go with the with the with the with the program, they'd already run you off from here, off from this hill. You know it. It's politics. Yeah, we get to go off for the police rotation after we went and bought a bunch of records one time for three years. That took us off. It's a buddy buddy system deal. Yeah. So what, what's the reason for us getting taken off? Well, you're the last one at it. We decided to put it at a nice even number six, so everybody have two spots here. You're the last one at it, so you can come off. See, so they used to do a rotation thing on that. Now there is eleven on that, so there couldn't be more than six then. But but, yeah. but it used to be a rotation thing to where they called you. We we we're was, still on. Okay, you're still on a rotation deal to where if it's your if it's your if it's your month to come up. That means they're liable to call you at two o'clock or three o'clock in the morning. It don't matter if it's a rainstorm or a tornado. You got to jump up. And you got to go and serve that wreck. Yep, that's how we do it. How we do it. But if they ever get it in for you, you're done. You're done. <laughs> the way it is. That is about right. So where is the justice and all that? Hell, there ain't none. But that's just the way it works. In other words, if you make them mad, you're done. They'll make they'll make they'll make it, make it hard on you, won't they? Yep. What is that thing right there? Does that come out of an axle? I got, I have to I have to oh, ask that. That's uh, for uh, uh, wreckers that go on the okay uh, on the on the center cap. Yep. Keeps the wheels off of the uh, off the curb. Hits them things first. Breaks them off. And you hear them break. Really? Yep. Won't we'll get near wheels. So you went through a lot of those, then, Eddie. Yeah. We go through a bunch of. Them. Jason, good talking to you. Good seeing you, man. You too. I'm so glad that that you have made. A predominant move, and, and you're sticking in with the industry um, for as long as I can. <laughs> do you do you have uh, children to where that they can take okay. up your slack and and roll with with your business after after you're possibly uh, dead and gone, which hopefully won't be in the near time future. I stay in the body business. It'll be pretty quick, you know. I like a I got a 14 year old boy, and I've got an eight year old little girl, and neither one of them are interested in cars. Neither Absolutely hate cars. But you know that may change. I know. That's kind of like that's like the the uh, the the quality of the food that we eat. Back whenever I was a kid, you could get me to sit down at a table and eat certain items. To where now I like them. Yeah. I love them. Things change over the years. Things change. So I, where where are you at now? Are you? I am. Uh, uh, since all that rigmarole went went bad in my life with the Oklahoma deal, I don't know. Did you ever look me up? You never looked me up. Um, go ahead and write my name down, if you don't mind. And if you feel like it, you can look me up. Um, Dennis, D-E-N-N-I-S, James, J-A-M-E-S, Juby, J-U-B-B-Y, Jackson. They actually planted a bomb in the back of my truck and activated the bomb in 2009. The same year that the ice storm hit, because I wound up out in Oklahoma, do a major uh, investigation out there. They planted a bomb in the back end of my truck and activated it, blowed the windows out of my camper, destroyed my camper. You can Google my name, and you'll see all that stuff where I was actually out there, uh, basically blowed the whistle on what went on with the Oklahoma bombing. In other words, I discovered that there was a, a government cover-up and whenever I exposed them, I made that many more enemies. So now I got enemies in Tennessee, now I got enemies in Kentucky, now I got enemies in Oklahoma, and now I got enemies out in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, and you may be saying, well, how in the world did you get enemies out in Atlanta, Georgia, in the, in the state of Georgia? 
Well, after I left you guys here that fall, I wound up going to Duluth, at, at uh, Duluth, Georgia, and I went to work out there for an outfit that had done sixty million dollars the year prior to that, which was in 2006. So the year that I was helping you was in 2007. The year that they shut the dam down was in 2008. But the year that I was out here, it may have been 2009, somewhere give or take around there, but uh, I was working at Duluth, Georgia. I'd been up fasting and praying up at the land between the lakes. I was a lot trimmer than what I ever thought about being now. And I made a cassette tape and decided to send, to go to the Capitol building and take a clear envelope and put it on the governor's door, Governor Sonny Padue, and leave it there for him to listen to. Well, I had no idea. This was the day after Christmas. I had no idea that they was going to take something like that so serious to the point that the day after Christmas, whenever all the feds was supposed to went back to work, I stopped them from going back to work because they thought it was a bomb scare. I left my business card in there where I was working at in Duluth. I get to GBI, Georgia Bureau Investigations, to my workplace come to my workplace asking me, was you the guy that left that cassette tape at the governor's office? I said I was. They go, do you have any idea how much money you just got through cost in the state of Georgia? I go, what do you mean? And they explained to me what had happened and it was all over the news the day before. I said I had no earthly idea. I go, it's y'all that's being paranoid. I said the, the, the package was clear. You could walk up to it and see the cassette tape. I said, what did you think it had in it, Amtrak's or something? Well, we didn't know. We wasn't taking nothing, nothing, uh, yeah. So they basically got me tagged as me being a potential homegrown terrorist. You don't think that that's affected my bit, my, my occupation towards getting out here and working for other body shops? Whenever they find out about my past, they steer clear of me. So they have basically ruined my professional occupation. Well, I mean, are you uh, are you living? I haven't uh, worked in body shops since 2000. Since let me see, since uh, 20 and 13. Since 20 and 13. So are you out here now? Are you out west? No, I'm I'm still in Tennessee. Tennessee. I'm on my father's homestead. Um, they're all dead now, but they they've made it hard on me out there in Tennessee because of my background. So what are you doing now? You Nothing. Doing I'm, I'm, I'm disabled. I mean, whenever you're carrying an extra man around, yeah, you know, yeah. and of course I'm supposed to be messed up in the mind, in which I know that I'm not, simply because of my passion, my religion, but but I've been all broke up and been up anyways on various operations and stuff, so they went ahead and declared me disabled at the age of, I guess, 56. Unless you got money coming in fifty six, it could be worse. Now I'm fifty nine. Well, it, it could be it could be a lot worse. Oh, it could be. I could be homeless out here without yeah. no without no uh, <clears throat> without no roof over my head. Heck yeah, Talk it could like be worse. You got a roof over your head. You're doing all right. You're all that good stuff. So. Anytime you're in there, you swing by and holler at me. Are you sure? Yeah, come by anytime. Well, I won't never be able to go back to work in the body shop industry, not in this shape that I'm in, you know, because I can't even hardly bend over, much less stand on my feet all day. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Well, I tell you what, old Herbie, Herbie's, I bet you ain't having Herbie's every bit, probably a little bit bigger than you are. He probably is. Yeah, he is. He was a pretty good sized boy whenever I was working, yeah. whenever yeah. I was up here working for you. Well, of course, he, like, like he told me, he said, Dennis, he said, I got everything in the world more paid for. He said, the only thing I care about is working a little bit and getting some extra money. That way I can have me some fishing money and I can get out on the lake and I can go fishing. What are you still doing? He was five. Uh -huh. want to line it. What is that? They said that uh, it's more they want to get into. So about BMW calls for sandbagging here, sandbagging there, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. They don't get in until they don't go. Okay. We'll send her to water, Mark, when they get her done. Then. No problem. Are they, oh, after they get done back here? Well, after, yeah, after we get 
Uh, I think it's got to go down there for some uh, sunroof stuff anyway. Yeah. So we'll just. It's got to go down the hall over there. Yeah. So we need to bring it back here. Bring it back here. We'll give it a couple of days and then we'll send her down. Let's